Um, hi, I am Giovanna. I am from Expat Latin Network. Um, I will ask you something now. If you can uh, let me know in the chat, please. Are you able to see me and hear me? If someone can say yes to me, that would be great. Well, I got some answers, I think. Let me see. Oh, yes. Perfect. Thank you, Beck. Thank you, everyone. Hi, Lilette. Good morning. Good morning. I can see you. Perfect. Thank you. I can see you and hear you as well. We are just going to wait for a few more minutes for other people to join, about five minutes. Um, and also our colleague uh, from expat, uh, from Mr. Mortgage, sorry. He's also going to be here in a second. Oh, there he is. Robin. There you are. <laughs> Good morning. morning. Everything works. Yes, I was just telling everyone that we were waiting for you to join. And then just a few more minutes until everyone can yes. join. How are you guys this morning? Very good. I mean, sun is shining, so I know. <laughs> finally, <laughs> <laughs> finally, finally. I, I, um, I actually had to turn around because it's kind of sunny, but not completely sunny. <laughs> wow! Well, at this point, I'm I'm left with kind sunny. It's kind sunny will do for me because I need the sun. <laughs> every way, every race uh, counts in that sense, right? So for sure. Right. Indeed, uh, how are you guys? You good? I you am wanna... good. Yes, yes, I'm all Very good. Busy. Yeah. Very so, uh, busy, actually. So, but busy, good. This is good, indeed. Very good. Yeah, that's uh, it. Keeps you off the street. That's keeps yes. Off the street. <laughs> actually, I was going to say, keep, keeps me off the street and a lot of houses. <laughs> there you go. Nice. <laughs> yes. Very good. Very good. No, I'm excited for uh, for the webinar today. Yeah, I think it's going to be a good one. Undoubtedly. Yeah, Devon is hosting, so it is going to be a good one. Right. Oh. <laughs> no, <laughs> pressure. no pressure. No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Indeed. So shall we kick off and start everything then? Yeah, you guys good to go? Yeah, let's. Um, and, uh, maybe some people will join later on, and uh, but they will catch on uh, quite quickly, yeah. undoubtedly. So I think so, be yeah, because we are past. Oh, maybe we could wait a lot more, two minutes or so, then uh, it will be a exactly five minutes if that's uh, i think it should be fine so you know what i'm gonna do for those streams i'm just gonna grab some water then i'll be right back very good i was gonna say these new zooms have these uh interactive emojis now so if anybody wants to use the emoji <laughs> go ahead <laughs> and use them during <laughs> the presentation how are you are you guys busy robin Yes, yeah, well, uh, uh, like Diavana mentioned and you mentioned as well, uh, 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 good busy. Uh, so yeah, it's, uh, 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 um, uh, where we have a, a lot of uh, appointments, a lot of happy happy people to help with uh, with their houses and uh, future plans and so on. So uh, uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. But it's very nice to uh, to do these, these these kinds of things as well uh, and to uh, teach people how everything works. Um, but yeah, um, we're quite quite busy for sure. It's it's an exciting market as it is right now, right? So. We can see that the housing market is kind of cooling down after the frenzy of last year. Um, and it's uh, it's nice to see that uh, people start understanding more and more that um, we just reached a new kind of leveling out of the market in a sense. So uh, and it's very important to not always go blindly on what you read online everywhere that the housing market is downwards or of the interest rates are increasing crazy. That's because it's basically be aware, and this is the first thing I want to mention, be aware of what is clickbait and what is actual information. If you just make sure that if you read something you're not entirely sure of, check in with somebody uh, like with us, uh, all three of us, um, because then you kind of know what is actually the situation is. And I like that that happens more and more people start understanding what the market is actually like, uh, and then uh, can base their choices on that. So it's nice to see that shift in the market a bit. So there's uh, the, 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 um, uh, the stress is cooling down and that's, uh, that's good to see. No. That's such a that's such a good advice. That talking to someone because, uh, uh, as you say, it's such a clickbait all, all the time. Uh, I, I see the news. Oh, the marketing is going down. The house market is going down, and then suddenly the next day, oh, we see it slightly. <laughs> you know, okay, seriously, they have to stop with this. It's freaking out everyone. Uh, yeah, um, that's that's the thing. It, 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 right, it's like one yeah. day if everything goes well uh, with the financial market, the houses are going up again, and then the next day, oh, they're going crash. Uh, they they're going down like crazy, and we, and we, the people who work with this, we go, yeah. like, oh, 
No, yeah, no they're and, not. Well, they're I'm, not. I'm okay. So I'm, it's, it's part of our job that we manage, yes, how, indeed. To yes. manage the, the, what actually the situation is and, and guide the people in, in their future plans. But it's... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, so I'm. I have no problem doing it, but it's it's annoying that people. Uh, there are still a lot of companies and large companies too that just want to Indeed. kind of scare people into advice. And I think yeah, and that's very bad. Though. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so this sounds weird because now I'm scaring people to about. Yeah. So that's, yeah. that's not yeah. to do. Just the, being well the strong, irony of uh, that. Uh, yeah, the yeah. irony. Indeed. Yeah. Uh, no, but I mean, I, that's I think why... what, what applies to all of us is that when when so, when we see something that doesn't make sense to our clients, yeah. we will tell tell you. I prefer to have a client that is happy and that I can. Yes, yeah, indeed. Yeah. Right? Well, so, that's yeah. also why we do these webinars so we can answer right. some clarify some things insight. as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because it is changing so quickly and so fast, and some yeah. it isn't. Um, yeah. But we'd like to. Be up to date with it as well. So. Yeah, it's turning Shall into a start? podcast almost. Yes, though, yeah. right. Shall we start the webinar <laughs> then? <laughs> Shall we start this podcast now? Yeah, I do love podcasts, though. So I'm all up for a podcast. So uh, <laughs> next step for the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, so again, everyone, good morning. Uh, thank you for being here. Um, let's start it and uh, we're going to, oh, I always have to click here. So let's uh, uh, move forward and uh, talk a little bit what we're going to talk about it today. Uh, we're going to talk about our company, of course, Expat Latin Network, about our service, our process, uh, renting or sell it, what are the pros and cons, all the rules and regulations that you need to know, contract types as well, all the responsibilities, tenant and landlord, and of course, the latest news. Um, uh, this presentation, just so you know, will be shared with you and re uh, also the record that will be shared with you, with you, uh, I believe, like even today or maybe tomorrow, just so you know. And uh, we, you're also going to have our contacts in the presentation. So you do like, if you like to book an intake with us to take, if you have more questions or if you would like to know about a service, just uh, um, you're going to see, a, I believe it's a QR code at the end uh, uh, for all of us. So you can just uh, get in contact or you can just send, uh, send an email from the presentation uh, that you're going to receive the same email and then we all can help you. And now I will pass every, uh, to Mr. Mortgage so he can uh, 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 let us know what we're going to talk about today. For sure. Thank you for the very clear and uh, uh, introduction there. Uh, so, Mr. Morso, obviously, uh, well, I'm going to tell you something about us, uh, what our service is like, um, uh, what, is it, what a rental mortgage or investment mortgage, buy to let, keep to let, what the difference is. Basically, it's all an investment mortgage, kind of a tip of the bill already, but uh, there are different ways to get there. The financial requirements we'll discuss with you, um, so you know kind of what you can expect and what you're up against and what you, what you need to have. And the uh, property protection uh, law. So it's so an important thing. And of course, the favorite topic of everybody all over the world ever is taxes. Um, it's something that will also uh, let you know kind of what, what, the, uh, what the implication is to a certain extent. It really depends on your personal situation. So also to give you an, uh, some idea here, what we'll discuss here is uh, general information first. Um, and then later on, you can ask questions in the Q&A. Um, but uh, uh, when it comes to a very personal question about your personal options or with your the property that you have, it might make more sense to schedule a call later on to have some uh, more detailed uh, uh, questions and answers there. But this is basically what we're going to discuss. So uh, I'm I'm very excited. Let's uh, let's go. Yes, let's go. And uh, as you said, uh, we do have a Q and A, and we have a chat. So if during the presentation you have questions and they are not so specific as uh, Robin mentioned, please put them on the Q and A or in the chat. Uh, uh, and then we're gonna make sure that at the end uh, we have the time to answer them, uh, or at least most of them, because of course we do have a, a timeline as well to follow. Uh, but yeah, feel free to pop up your questions on the Q and A. And then again, if tomorrow or something you forgot, uh, let's say today you forgot to uh, ask something or you remember something tomorrow you can always contact us we are always open to answer questions uh let's go here we are Oh, oh, I passed you fast. So this is the team from uh, ALN. Uh, I'm Giovanna. I am from Brazil. I live in the Netherlands for about 14, I think 15. You see when people live too much in a country, they even forget <laughs> how long they've been there. So I think it's going to be 15, but I do have to make the, 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 the count again. 
Uh, I am a lighting consultant and also a buying specialist. I also help people to buy the properties. Um, yeah, and uh, in lighting the properties as well. Uh, Kimo is our, the founder of the company and also the CEO. And then we let, I will pass to you because you're the best person to introduce yourself. Oh, well, you can introduce me. Um, well, <laughs> I'm, well let, I'm a lighting consultant. I look after the Amsterdam area. I am Filipino Australian. Uh, I'm with Dio. I actually can't remember how long I've been in places now because I've been <laughs> around so much. But um, I think here I've been here for eight years. So yeah, uh, navigating the the Dutch uh, life and now navigating the Dutch uh, rental market. Uh, yeah, as much as I can. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move further. So uh, here is uh, the regions in the Netherlands where we do uh, uh, offer our uh, service, uh, tenant placement and property management as well. We're gonna go. Uh, uh, we're gonna talk about them uh, further in the presentation. So the whole South region: uh, Amsterdam, Groningen, Den Haag, Rotterdam, and Eindhoven. In Eindhoven area, of course. Um, let's move further. Uh, yeah, Robin, it's with you. Again. Very good. Yes, meet the team of Mr. Morgan. That's uh, that's where we are. Um, if you uh, well, uh, if you take away the beard, then I'm the second one from the left, um, and I'm joined by my wonderful team of uh, Cesar, Egle, and Uskan, uh, with a mortgage specialist and a growth marketeer, as always, of course. Um, uh, uh, my name is pronounced Uitehaven, so I won't have like a poll to do that or something. It's a tricky thing, uh, but it's uh, that's basically who we are. I was born and raised in Amsterdam. And always very much like the international vibes there. I was uh, uh, raised in a very international uh, area as well. So a lot of different cultures and things. I always very much like that. And each of us have this kind of link to uh, uh, in, in the international world, uh, whether they moved to the Netherlands and found a way here or parents moved here. Um, basically, our goal was that we saw uh, when you move to the Netherlands, it's a tricky thing. Uh, I very much like the adventurous vibe that everybody has moving to a new country and settling down here. And then uh, the Netherlands being the Netherlands, it can be a bit tricky to find your way around through the bureaucracy and the paperwork and everything. It's well taken care of, but you have to know your way around. Um, uh, and doesn't have to be as daunting as it might seem at first. And that's what we're here for also to give you an, uh, a clear path through uh, buying your first home, second home, finance uh, or starting to invest in real estate, for instance. Uh, all of that is something that we cover in our service from start to finish, uh, always starting with uh, introductory call to kind of get an idea of what your situation is, to get to know each other. And then we'll dive into deeper in the financial analysis where we really look into, okay, what is your situation and what is your goal? And how can we best go from your the current situation uh, that you're in to the goal that you have? So in this case, obviously, um, investing in uh, real, estate aid, uh, real estate and make sure that your money uh, works for you in that sense. Um, different ways to go there. And that's all something that we, uh, we can guide you in, uh, again, as mentioned, from start to finish. Uh, whether you want to buy an investment property or you already live in a property and you want to rent that out. All different options that we'll uh, discuss right here. So that's uh, what we do and what we very much enjoy doing as well. Uh, so uh, that's uh, about us. That's uh, That was a very good introduction. Thank you very much. <laughs> Let's move further. Yeah, that's uh, our service. That's, uh, yes. Yes. So uh, yeah, what I mentioned before, it's it's about uh, first time home uh, buyers. So when you just go come to the Netherlands or when you live here for um, for some time already, you want to buy your first home, but also when you want want to buy your second home, third, or move ahead and and, and buy your fifth or sixth home, however you want to do that. Uh, if you use it for your personal residency, or if you want to refinance, for instance, uh, when uh, later on the interest rate might drop, or you want to increase your mortgage to do a renovation, for instance. Um, uh, but also when you want to, uh, uh, for instance, the last bit, it's an, not as fun situation, of course, but when there is a, a divorce or splitting up and you want to, that has to be taken care of when it comes to the mortgage as well. All of that's something that we'll take care of. And obviously buy to let and keep to let essentially investment mortgages. Uh, it's also something that we do. So basically anything that has something to do with mortgages, we can uh, help you out with and uh, guide you through the whole process. There I am. I was on mute. <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah, Lilette, do, do you want to talk about this slide? 
Uh, yes. So Perfect. there's a few things to know before uh, renting out your property in the Netherlands and obviously where to get uh, an approval, the rules, uh, what are regulated and what it, what it means to, uh, when they say regulated or deregulated regulated and the how if you need a housing permit or a sharing permit um sorry the next slide um yeah so for approval obviously Mr Mortgage will um uh, discuss that a little bit further in terms of um when you are renting out your home that what you need to do to um change your mortgage from a buy to let um uh, the type of contract and also uh, with the VBA that um uh, it's also state uh, stipulated in the deeds also if you can rent out uh, your property or not um uh yeah so I'm just going to talk a little bit further in terms of the different permits so uh Dio, uh, next slide the rules and regulations um, so in certain cities and areas, uh, tenants will require um, a housing permit, and this is issued by the municipality. And normally, um, uh, when it means to be regulated or deregulated, um, each prop um, properties are um, uh, done on a points-based system. So any property that is on the private, uh, any properties that's under 149 points, uh, uh, falls under the social housing and any property that's over 149 points, this falls under the private sector and these are deregulated properties. So regulated properties are under 149 points. Now the points are based on the size of the property, the WLZ value, which is given by the municipality, uh, the energy uh, efficiency label of your property, um, normally um, uh, uh, you will have to apply for that and um, the luxury meaning the fittings um, in your properties such as uh, how big uh, your countertop is uh, having a bath in your property add points to the value um, uh, of your property uh, the points of your property so next slide um, so uh, when you need a housing permit, um, housing uh, permit uh, generally given. Uh, sorry, I've just gone blank. So uh, properties for a uh, housing permit. So certain uh, municipalities have different requirements when it comes to a housing permit. So, like for example, in the Hague, so any properties that's over under 185 points or less. Or if the property uh, is uh, at 1,015 and 31 or less, regardless of points, will need a housing permit. Um, in Amsterdam, uh, these are for properties, uh, again, for regular pre regulated properties that's under 149 points or up until 808. Um, or in case of lease or private agreements, uh, 1,068 and 83, you will need, um, the tenant will need a, a housing permit, which each uh, you can apply with the municipality. And in Eindhoven, it's prop it's only properties that are owned by corporations. Um, so uh, again, each municipality is different. Uh, so it's always good to check uh, uh, on the website. Um, the sharing permit, this is for the landlord this time uh, that uh, needs to acquire a sharing permit. If they are going to rent it out to uh, two people from, more than two people from different household. Um, now to, in order to apply for a housing permit, it needs to meet a certain criteria, such as a fire safety, a communal space over 11 meters square, um, sound insulation, and tenants uh, will have uh, individual contracts to apply for a sharing permits. And each, uh, some municipalities only allow certain permits, sharing permits as well for the area, I should say. Back to you, Dio.
types well there are, uh, uh, the most common uh, contracts in the Netherlands are three types of rental contracts that can be used when you rent your property uh, we call them model a b and c um, so model a it would be um, it, the there are different areas that use different contracts uh, um, for example we see that model b is the one of the contracts that people use the most in the Amsterdam area for example here in Eindhoven area people are still using the model a uh, uh, quite a lot and and uh, we see sometimes model B as well, but not so intense as model uh, as in Amsterdam, for example. But model A, it means that is indefinite contract. Minimal rental period is 12 months. And after that, uh, the tenant has a complete uh, has an indefinite contract. So which means that he can stay in the property as long as he wants. Uh, the tenant has protection since the beginning of the contract, of course. And notice period is one uh, is uh, uh, normally one month. Uh, that they have to uh, uh, give the notice before they bid the property. Uh, again, 12 months minimum, which means they can only leave after those 12 months. Um, and also, yeah, but we do we do see cases where the notice periods can be a little bit higher. And also, normally, deposit is one month. It depends on the condition. Some areas are two. It depends on what uh, what will be uh, who is going to be renting out the property. For example, if they have pets or something like that, that those things can be changed. But remember, that is a minimum of twelve months. And then after that, the tenants can stay in the property as long as they want. Uh, model B, we call a temporary rental contract because it's a maximum of 24 months. Uh, you cannot request a minimum term. The tenant has a... Uh, um, uh, no protection. Uh, notary period is also one month uh, uh, throughout the rental term, of course, and it cannot be extended without becoming a Model A. Uh, one uh, disadvantage of the Model B is that the tenant can always, uh, during those 20, there is no minimal uh, term. So the, the tenant can uh, uh, anytime uh, uh, give notice and uh, just uh, interrupt the contract. Uh, let's say he's there for, I don't know, four months or so, and and they wanted to leave the prop, they can. So with model B, they can't, they cannot, but with model uh, uh, with model A, they cannot, but with model B, they can do that. Uh, but, he, but also they can only stay in the property for a maximum of 24 months. If they decided to stay more, or if, of course, you as a landlord also agree with that, they, the, this rental uh, contract, Model B, will become a Model A, which means that after those 24 months, if nobody expressed uh, uh, that they will leave the property, then the contract will become a Model B automatically, a Model e, uh, A automatically, which means that the tenant can stay as long as they want, right? Um, there is also a Model C. Model C, it's normally used when uh, uh, people will move out for a certain period uh, out from the country for a certain period for example if you decide to do a sabbatic or uh, you have a new job in another country that is only for uh, a year or two so which means that uh, you can rent it out your property for a certain period of time you can requ request a minimal, a minimal term let's let's say you got a new job in any other uh, country and it is only one year contract for that job so that you can only the person knows that if they he rented out uh, uh, on a model c it means that they they can only stay there for let's say eight months for example uh, you have to stay you'll be returning to the property of course you can extend with a similar, similar terms let's say if you got another uh, extension of that job uh, of the job for, for a, a year more for example then you can extend also this contract most likely only for three times and after that of course it will become uh, the other contracts as well same thing notice uh, one period uh, uh, one month uh, calendar period so that's what the, the the tenant has to let you know but you do have the ability to come back to the property uh, and put a minimal term in, and put a maximal term and everything will be uh, uh, it will be a little bit more easy, but yeah, indeed, uh, most likely it will be used if you leave the country for some reason, right? Um, let's move further. How can you help? This is our, let's go through our process a little bit at Expat Housing Network. So uh, one thing that uh, that we really, really uh, find very important is that uh, 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 the whole process is very transparent for everyone. Uh, we do actually care about it, what is going on, because we have been on your situation, we have been on the people, we have been tenants ourselves, and then we also became landlords, and then we became owner of properties, and then we have to sell them. So we've been to all that process that you probably Yeah. <laughs> 
uh, have been or is or will be in the future. So we do uh, try to treat our uh, the whole process of finding a tenant, putting your property out there uh, uh, as an experience and not just a transaction. We treat your home with the same level of care as hospitality like it's our own. And I think that's very, very important. Uh, it always, you can see that in our approach as well, not only uh, towards you as our client, but also as a tenant. So we very much like the tenant to be comfortable as much as they can. And they and, and we do believe that we will treat their property, their property as well as their own home and we will take care of everything. Uh, there are no hiding fees with us. Uh, the pricing is based on the effort and value of our service. Uh, with our large network, we have access to a pool of professionals from num numerous uh, rep uh, numerous companies so we do work with a lot of relocation companies for, for example a lot of uh, we do work with a lot of expats a lot of companies that bring people from abroad so we do have a large uh, uh, number of contacts that we can uh, uh, to show your property to put your product out there and have the best and uh, uh, we can find and of course continue support and believe uh, we do believe that the support doesn't end when the tenants get the keys uh, but it's indeed just the beginning because we also uh, offer the whole uh, 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 aftercare of your property. So here is how the service actually work a little bit. Uh, we can go to uh, in deeply on this process, of course, if you'd like to have an intake. Uh, we offer an end-to-end -end property service that will take all the hassle away from you so you can enjoy uh, uh, life even more in the sun, uh, how it is now. Uh, intake and inventory, that's the first step. We'd like to come to the property and see, meet you in person and see if there is, a, a, what uh, uh, what does the property need? If there is everything is correct for rent and out, uh, uh, do the whole process uh, uh, to put the property out there and be rented out quite fast as well and give you the advice that is necessary or just to have the talk and see how can we get and we get the best clients get to know what are your needs as well as a as a, as a landlord of course uh listen and promotion the property had left ev uh, leave everything ready to put the property out there in the uh, most known websites and also to share with our network and all the companies and agents we work for a long time uh, uh make nice pictures of the property let everything ready view it in the screening we'll schedule the viewings welcome candidates in your property property and screen them before sharing the best offers with you make sure that they can actually pay uh, uh, they can actually pay uh, the rent that they, they are actually working in the Netherlands that they have the permits that they have they need to have and of course because you as a landlord will have your own uh, uh, details things that you'd like to have or not want to have so we make we can make sure that everything is correct even before doing the viewing and even before and after having the viewings and have the offer share the most the offer the offers that will uh, 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 be the the most uh, um, um, equal to the property right uh, of course going through the contract and the handover and I like this part quite a lot because as I was uh, someone I was also a tenant not at once but like I think 10 times before I rent some I bought something in the Netherlands uh, um, and I find very I found I remember that time that no explanation is given to the tenant to just a simple translator translation or something like that so uh, we do believe that uh, not only with you as a landlord that together we can uh, see which what is the best contract for your uh, situation for your property or for what is happening in your life in that moment but also uh, make sure that the tenant understand very correct what it says in the contract so in the future when the, uh, the time comes that we have to terminate the process that nothing will be uh, 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 understood wrong that all the parties will be happy and things can move on right so we find very important we will draft the contract the rental contract and make sure that all is signed and paid before we complete the handover and inspection so that's something we do we make sure that everything is correct as uh, as it can be uh, and again make sure that the tenant understand what they are signing and that they know all the responsibilities and of course being there uh, uh, in the check-in make sure that they know how the property works how everything is done in the country about registration and everything and and of course, afterwards, uh, viewing screening, if you opt for the property management, it means that the service will make, we make sure that the service, uh, uh, the rent is paid in time and it will be contact point of the, and management of the property and everything that happens. So we'll be the contact for the tenant. You don't have to deal with them if you opt on, if you choose to go for property management and we will handle all the problems that will come and share with you and make sure that everything is handled correctly, that you don't have to worry about it. If you need more details, please let us know. Um, let's move forward. Mr. Mortgage. So Robin will be back.
Yeah, yes. <laughs> like magic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I have this fan and some sort right? of fan in the light show. Uh, thanks again for for the for the clear explanation so far. Um, now, of course, then, then we know pretty much all there is to know when it comes to contracts and so on, and that's uh, uh, that's that's pretty clear. And then you need a little itty bitty thing, and that's the financing. Um, that's uh, so. Let's dive into that. Uh, and there are basically uh, two options, as mentioned before. Uh, so uh, keep to let and buy to let, and then we'll also discuss the the difference between the two. So if I can, uh, so very friendly ask if we can go up to the next slide. And then the next as well. Almost there. And then one more. There we are. Yeah, there's a difference between buy to let and keep to let. Basically, um, it's the difference is the process. So in any case, you uh, it boils down to an investment mortgage. And an investment mortgage is uh, a mortgage, so uh, a loan a financing to finance the property uh, to rent it out. So not to live in yourself, but to rent it out to tenants, obviously. Buy to let is, uh, well, it states right here, it refers to the practice of purchasing a property to rent out as an investment. So when you buy the property, and it's not yours yet, and then you rent it out directly. The keep to let is, uh, it's in the name kind of, you already have the property, so you currently live in it, for instance, and then you think, oh, okay, sure, let's, me, let's move to the new house, but I'd like to keep this one because I can rent it out to somebody uh, else, and then uh, that's a nice investment there as well. A couple of reasons why you could go for that. For one, it's a nice investment, of course, so it builds up equity. Uh, uh, so the property value probably increases. You get uh, a return on uh, based on the rental income. But it could also be that you think, OK, sure, maybe, maybe it's nice to have a property still in this area. Maybe I'd like to move back later on. Different reasons to do that, uh, and that's the keep to that. So when you own the property already and you refinance it into uh, an investment mortgage. And then when we um, move forward, then we'll see the residential mortgage versus the rental mortgage, so an investment mortgage. Let's uh, move up. So that's the, the two differences as well. So a residential mortgage is a mortgage where, uh, for a property that you're going to live in yourself. That's the most important thing. And the rental mortgage is the same thing as an investment mortgage, again, to rent out a property. The main difference, maybe you're already kind of familiar with the residential mortgage. It's very interesting. In the Netherlands, it's one of the few countries that you can finance up to 100% of the property value. Loan, LTV means loan to value. So you take 100% loan based on the value of the property. You buy a house for 500,000 euros, value comes back as 500,000 euros, and you can also secure a mortgage then for 500,000 euros. Of course, given the fact that you can afford. Then the transfer tax, when you buy a property for, your, for yourself to live in, is 2%. Um, under certain conditions, you might even not have to pay any transfer tax. Um, that applies only when you're under 35 and you buy for less than 440. When you use the property for yourself, then you don't have to pay transfer tax. When, you're, when you don't comply to those rules and regulations, then you do have to pay 2% transfer tax when you use the property for yourself. The regular interest rates apply, so for the residential mortgage, these interest rates uh, apply. Approximately 4.5 or a bit less right now, somewhere between 4 and 4.5% is the average interest rate right now. Now, when you compare that to an investment mortgage or a rental mortgage, it works a bit differently. So you can see then the 70 to 90% loan to value. So you cannot finance the full purchase of the full value of the, of the property uh, with an investment mortgage. Does it automatically mean that you always have to input money? When you buy to let, yes. So when you buy a property from the market right now, then you do have to pay, uh, you have to input a certain amount of your personal savings to be able to secure an investment mortgage because an investment mortgage bank does not finance the full 100% of the property value. When you buy, let's continue on that buy to let situation. So when you buy a property from the market and you're going to rent it out directly, then there's also a transfer tax, which is significantly higher than the regular rate. So that's 10.4%. So that's good to keep in mind when you consider your finances as well, uh, that you do have to have to pay a 10.4% transfer tax. When it comes to the interest rates, the interest rates are usually approximately 1% higher than the regular interest rates uh, applicable in the market right now. Now, I mentioned before, this is, this is the buy to let situation. So when you buy a property to rent it out, then the transfer tax is 10.4%. Um, there's a couple of exemptions here. 
when you buy an investment property, you never pay transfer tax. Uh, sorry, um, uh, a new build property, you never pay transfer tax. So when, um, and there's basically a fair reason for that because it's not, never been owned by anybody else. It's being built for you. So you're the first owner. So there's no transfer tax, regardless of buying it as a residential mortgage or with an investment purpose, regardless of your age, you never pay transfer tax with a new build. Now, uh, a common misconception is when you own the property already, existing home, you live in it, you're very happy, and then you think, well, this is the moment to move to a new house. And then you want to keep your current property and you want to transfer it into an investment per property. And then a lot of people think, oh, now I still have to pay this 10.4% transfer tax. No, transfer tax is about transfer of ownership. So when there's a financial transfer, uh, you get money and somebody else gets the property or the other way around, you get money and you get the property. That's a transfer of ownership and funds. Then there's transfer tax. When you already own the property and you transfer your mortgage into an investment mortgage, you are still the owner. So no transfer tax is charged when you keep the property and turn it into an investment mortgage. So that's important to uh, note. I know it's a lot of information. Basically, when you buy a house and it's existing, you pay transfer tax for yourself, 2%, for investment, 10.4%. If anything else, then no. Um, that's basically the difference right there. And again, if you, if in your specific situation, if you want to know something, let me know. Uh, let's uh, move forward to the next bit. The, the word transfer taxes. You know, I only see taxes. <laughs> it's just like it goes like, you know, like, sure. oh. Yeah, so transfer tax, it's not, it's not a scary thing. It is something that it's a necessary evil from the tax authorities in the end, yes. but they uh, basically, that's it. You buy a house for yourself, 2%. You buy a house for investment, 10.4. If you change your current house that you already have into an investment, no transfer tax. There you that, go. There you yeah. go. <laughs> I won't say transfer tax for the next five minutes, hopefully. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for, for letting me know. It's a no, lot no, no. It's just, it's just, if it sounds, no, it's um, it's yeah, good. it's just the way you, you put it out there saying uh, it is a lot of information and that yeah, immediately yeah. came to my mind. Indeed, <laughs> it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the next bit is, and this is kind of the, the main reason, is the return on the investment. You want to know that uh, it's an investment in the end, so it has to have a return usually, right? So the only reason why you don't want to emphasize on that is that you want to refinance only because you want to move back later on, just want to keep the property. But usually you want to have a return on your investment. So two examples here uh, on the left hand side, you can see um, the purchase price of 315,000 euros and expected rental income for uh, 1,386 to be very, very specific. Um, and then you can see the required funds. Um, so that is including everything. So this is including the uh, transfer tax. Sorry, I did go there, but it's <laughs> um, uh, this is 10.4% uh, uh, and also the input of your personal savings that's required and all the costs involved, everything. Then when you buy a house for 315,000 euros in this example, the required funds are approximately 100,000 euros. Um, and then uh, the net return and the cash, uh, cash on cash return that also depends on uh, the net return is more specified on um, uh, the difference of your interest, uh, your mortgage payments and the rental income. The cash on cash uh, return also includes this 10,000 euros input of your personal savings. So this kind of shows you what the expected um, uh, return on the investment is. Why this is interesting to see. It's not something that everybody only always focuses on, but especially when you already have an investment portfolio. So for instance, also on ETFs, on the stock market, or you name it, uh, maybe a savings account even, uh, it's always good to have something uh, cash on the side as well. So uh, when you see that, then you can kind of uh, uh, diversify your investments as well. You can see what your uh, return uh, is there as well, because div div diversifying your um, your uh, investment portfolio is kind of the key uh, with when it comes to uh, high and low risk and high and low return. When you have a balance there, and that's very nice, of course, and this can be part of that. Now, when you um, invest, uh, then the other uh, um, overview here is the purchase price of 600,000 euros. And then you can see uh, kind of the different numbers here as well. So the net return and cash and cash uh, return here on this specific property is a bit lower, but it basically also shows not necessarily when you buy more that the return is lower, but it really depends on the specific property, uh, what the return on your investment is based on the expected rental income, input of personal savings and so on. 
This really depends per, on the on the specific property that you buy in the end. So these are just two examples. If we go to the next bit right there, the financial requirements. This is very important, of course, because you want to know what you uh, what you have to uh, comply to to be able to uh, secure an investment mortgage. So let's take a look at the next slide, and there you can see the one of the most important thing uh, things are the purchase price of the property and the value of the property. Um, when you look when you compare investment mortgages to uh, residential mortgages, a residential mortgage is um, you as a client, as a person, are the mo uh, is the primary focus of this. So, what is your income? Uh, uh, what kind of a contract do you have? What kind of savings do you have? All of that is the primary uh, focus. With an investment mortgage, the property is more of the financial focus, is the primary focus, because the bank wants to know, okay, sure, what do we finance as an investment right here? And also it has to return uh, it has to give you a certain uh, return on of your investment as mentioned before so the purchase price and the value of a property is very important um and then uh, and there is always a down payment uh, that needs to be taken in consideration as well as mentioned before the maximum mortgage that you can take out ranges somewhere between the 70 and the 90 percent of the property value so there's a certain down payment required so you need to have some savings available to cover that um, and the loan to value ratio, therefore, is uh, and that is what that is. That's what determines the down payment in a sense. The rental income is also very important because, as mentioned, we want to be sure that the uh, investment that you do is actually something that you get a return on. So the rental income has to be higher than your mortgage payments, of course. Otherwise, um, you will have a debt instead of uh, a profit. There. And your personal financial situation is very will very much be taken in consideration as well. Not again, not as the primary focus. But we do want to know for sure that you can still live in your current house as well, uh, and that you can still live comfortably, and it has a benefit, and it's a, it's an addition to your uh, investment portfolio or an addition to your financial situation. So you benefit from it on the long run. In any case, so that's what we always want to be sure of that it's uh, that it makes financial sense. The choice that you made, of course. Purchase protection, the property purchase protection law. That's a mouthful. Uh, basically, what that means is there's um, some restrictions right now. And it's not fun, but it's basically something we have to consider in any case. So why this is put in place a couple of years ago, there were a lot of investors and there weren't necessarily only the private investors, because that's not the main thing, but uh, large investors that have a, a large portfolio in, in uh, apartments as well and properties, they pretty much bought up the whole place and then uh, nothing left nothing for uh, first time home buyers in the market. So that's why they put in a restriction saying, OK, uh, per uh, municipality, there's a cap. Anything under this cap, you cannot uh, rent out this property for the next period of time, depending on the municipality. For instance, in Amsterdam, you have to live in the property, if I'm not mistaken, for four years. If you're under this cap of 533 and then you can rent out the property. If you're not doing that, you simply cannot buy this property because this is the requirement that it, that it has. Now, this 533, what is good to keep in mind, that is the WOZ, the WAS value in the case of Amsterdam. So then um, that's the property value that the municipality determined it as. Um, uh, I won't go too, in too much detail. It's the average selling price of the year before last. Not really that interesting. What is good to keep in mind that the actual purchase price is usually higher. So with the 533, it could easily be 550 or even 600,000 euros that the actual purchase price is. So why I'm saying this, if you now fill in to Funda 533 Amsterdam, there is a fair chance that you're still not allowed to rent it out. It's the WZ value, which is usually lower. Again, be sure to check in with uh, uh, Expert Housing Network, uh, Expert Lending Network, sorry, um, to, to, uh, to see, okay, where in this range are we and can we actually do this for this property? Uh, if you're over this number, you can rent out the property, no problem. And it's always good to check that you, when you are considering buying a house, that you can actually buy it and rent it out, of course. Um, so that's the uh, Purchase Protection Act. These were just four cities that are examples of where it is. Um, be sure that when you buy somewhere that to check this Purchase Protection Act. Um, the taxes, again, the most fun situation right there. Now, there will be made some uh, adjustments. There's the property tax, the... Um, that's basically the tax that you uh, pay over having the property and there's their garbage disposal and things like that. That's uh, all there. Property transfer tax. I do think we're over five minutes since I last mentioned it. So <laughs> that is something to be considered uh, in any case. So be sure to know uh, income tax is important. 
So you pay income tax, obviously, over your income. Um, when you uh, rent out your house, uh, when you rent out an entire property, that rental income is currently not taxed, not taxed as income tax. Um, when you rent out one room, over a certain amount, it will be considered uh, uh, income tax. So when you rent out a room from your own property that you live, currently live in yourself, and you rent out one room to somebody, then that can be taxed over a certain amount. Um, and the capital tax, um, this is another thing. So when you own a property as your personal residency, your, uh, the property will not be uh, considered as an asset while you be taxed over, which is a good thing, which is very nice because uh, that's, uh, that it kind of encourages people to buy a property. But if you have it as uh, an investment property, then they will, it will be considered by the tax authorities as an asset. So this, it will be considered similarly as um, uh, money that you have in the bank. Um, so you do have to pay taxes over that. Now the tax situation, and I won't bore you too much with that because uh, it's it's quite uh, specific there or quite detailed. But there is a, a shift um, uh, made um, uh, in the, how the taxes are how you are charged. Where first it was that you have uh, a property that uh, that uh, corresponds with a certain value of a property, but you also had a debt, and simply the debt was taken off that uh, property value, and that's what you had to pay um, taxes over. So uh, you had a mortgage, uh, you had a property value of 500,000 euros, you have a loan for 300,000 euros. So that means subtracted from each other, 200,000 euros you will be taxed over. Now, now this has been changed a bit. So um, the tax situation is made a bit differently. So you pay a bit more taxes over owning the property because your debt, so your mortgage will be considered in a different way. What this really means for you personally, again, uh, I can always hear the questions coming up, but this really depends on the on your specific situation, on the specific value of the property and the mortgage that you have taken out and the remaining amount of your assets as well. So um, uh, uh, an estimate right now is simply not possible because there's too much variables to, uh, to show that. But when we do the financial analysis, this is part of what we show you as well, what that means for you text-wise as well to see if it makes sense what you're planning to do. That's the, considering the most important thing, uh, the most exciting thing of taxes right there. Pricing, there we are. And I think you guys are first, right? No, we are first, there we are. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, uh, we have two options when it comes to uh, buy to let or keep to let. Um, buy to let is when you buy the property to uh, rent it out directly, and we have a fixed fee of three thousand hundred and ninety nine uh, euros. Um, we have a small down payment, regardless of what uh, uh, service you take from us, and it's a small down payment to get things started of two hundred ninety nine euros to cover the hours that we put in uh, with for the financial analysis. So when we have a clear view and a detailed insight in what your Options are there's something that we'll discuss uh, with you in a, in a future call of about 45 to 60 minutes. So we have all the time we need to really discuss the details of your options. So we can discuss different scenarios. We'll discuss the process of buying and financing the property or to uh, readjust your mortgage to keep to let, for instance. Basically, answer any of your questions so you know always know exactly where you are and what your options are. That's not a one-time thing. It's regardless of how long it takes will uh, uh, guide you in that process. There's no not a maximum of calculations we do. There's uh, We won't charge extra for, I don't know, speaking English, for instance, uh, or, or to have translations from the documents from the bank. We like to uh, offer a complete service, so uh, and, and not with uh, certain uh, uh, additions in fee or something. Uh, we like a clean and simple uh, overview in our fees. So 299 down payment, and the rest of the fee is only charged when you go to the notary to sign the deed of your mortgage and to receive the keys if applicable. If you don't go to the no uh, to notary because you don't move forward with buying a property or refinancing, then you don't have to pay the rest. If we cannot get you there, you don't have to pay the rest as well. No cure, no pay. Though that last bit doesn't really happen because we already did a, such an in, uh, in-depth uh, check at first. So we know after the financial analysis, we know we can get you uh, the mortgage required. Uh, so that's basically what that is. Keep to let as a slightly lower uh, fee because then there's this adjustment of the mortgage, which is simply a bit less work. So that's uh, basically why we charge a bit less. Um, what is good to know with a uh, residential mortgage, the fees are tax deductible. That only applies when you use it as your personal resident. If you use it for a different purpose, you don't have a tax benefit there. Um, so that's basically uh, that. And then I think I can give it back to uh, 
Yeah. Yeah, the <laughs> thank other you. Area. Thank you very much. That was very clear. Yes, thank you. Appreciate that. Well, let me go further. And then, yeah, then I have my colleague Lilette back at us. Hi, sorry. Um, I was going to say if anyone at the end of this presentation, there is a QR code that you can book a complimentary consultation with us. Uh, I think I might have spoken a little bit too quickly in regards to their housing uh, permits and sharing permits and also the um, the point system. So you can always book a call and some some questions are quite specific to certain people. So it's always good to have these consultation at first as well as we cannot answer every single question. Um, so our, we provide two services. We provide tenancy placement and property management. You can choose one or the other. And as Giovanna said, um, uh, we'll do the intake. Um, oh, first we do actually the um, uh, consultation and then we will do a property intake where we come to your property, um, discuss, obviously give you advice as well on how to deliver your property. We always um, advise to sort of deliver it in, in a, a high spec, like make sure that everything is obviously working. And, you know, if you have a property that's in good condition, you attract certain um potential candidates to your property. So if you want a good candidate, it's good to deliver uh, a good property as well. We will take a, a photograph and uh, do a price assessment as well. Um, uh, then we will list it. Uh, we will list it internally with um, our sister company, uh, Expert Housing. Uh, and also uh, with uh, we work with a lot with uh, relocation companies. Uh, and we will also list it, promote it um, on Perarius. Um, we will conduct the viewings. We also notify, uh, we keep the landlord up to date in terms of when we will do the viewings. And we try to sort of filter um, candidates right from the beginning if you have a specific criteria and not have millions of people come to the property. Um, we will do the tenant screening, which will be obviously... Um, you know, whether it's their employment check, we ask for their, uh, give us a little bit of a bio about themselves. And um, uh, we will uh, organize the contract setup um, and the exchange we will be at the check-in, we'll conduct the check-in, we'll do a full report. And this, uh, the report is generally given to the tenant and uh, to the landlord, and it will have the full report of the pop of how the property is delivered. Um, and then we will uh, still provide uh, a two week support even after post check in with the landlord and the tenant just to make sure that everything um, is um, uh, is okay and then with property management, obviously uh, we are the point of contact. Uh, with third party as well. Um, uh, if there's any repairs in the property, we, um, we will get a third party and um, do a quote request. And obviously uh, we will um, notify the landlord of any um, of the pricing before obviously um, uh, proceeding with uh, the repair. And obviously, and I also analyze obviously what type of repair it is but we will also do the financial management so you don't have to worry about anything. So it'll be stress-free on your part. You just have to worry about when you get the rent into your account. But in terms of any uh, maintenance um, uh, and um, property management, uh, direct contact with the tenant, we look off after all of that. And our fees, obviously with tenancy placement, it's nine, we, we have a fixed, competitive pricing at the moment of 999, uh, it's, that's in, excluding VAT and then 5% uh, with property management, obviously with the, a minimum of 75 euros a month. Thank you very much, that was very clear, thank you. There we go, um, we have some latest news. Yeah, lighting news, would, uh, Lilette, would you like to go through those or? So this is also, there's a lot of questions in terms of what's going to happen next year. Um, we don't know what's going to happen next year as yet. Um, there is a proposal that the uh, points will go up from 149 to 187. We don't know what that entails yet. So 
don't email me with loads of questions of what that is. Um, we don't know. Um, I, I think there's a lot of uproar at the moment about this uh, new point system. Um, but if you have any questions, yeah, you're certainly welcome to email us um, at the WOZ value. Um, now, obviously, only accounts for 33% of the would be the 187 points um, in the new year. Um, uh, two new rules will be in effect. Yeah, so at the moment, we don't, but, you know, obviously, we try to keep our um, clients up to date. So as soon as we know anything, um, we will uh, update you. Yeah, one good thing about the uh, to 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 let you know is that if the law really passes and the point system change next year, it means that the points uh, are going to go up, and also uh, uh, the private sector, the difference in price will be uh, um, uh, yeah quite different, quite big. So if uh, uh, we are, we do believe they probably will pass that law. So it if you are thinking about renting, you should uh, uh, do this year still because you can use the uh, last points for this year, uh, 149 uh, yeah. points for this year. So you can still use that as a point uh, and uh, from 20, uh, 2024, uh, it might go up to 187, which will make a huge difference on the rental uh, monthly uh, the, uh, that you're going to receive. So if you are thinking about it, uh, it would be better for you to rent it out this year the property and uh, even if the if your property is already if you rented out the property this year and then last year next year they change the point system uh, system but you do have a rental contract that is in place it won't make a difference for you you can still use the points from the year before so that's that's something you should think about it uh, you can get uh, uh, it's more uh, appealing to you to rent out the property this year so you can use the minimum points for now 148 and then uh, um, continue to use them for next year instead of uh, going up to 187. Just think about it. If you have any doubts, let us know. We can uh, uh, go through it again and uh, and see what the best solution is for your property. Yeah. And I was going to say, there are ways that you can improve your points. Yes. Um, again, I mean, obviously, if your property is at, I don't know, 150, it's quite difficult to get to 187. But there are some adjustments that you can do, which is, you know, um, the energy label, um, certain fi uh, fixtures in the house that you can update. And, and, and definitely the major one is the energy label of your property. And again, the WOZ, because now it's only accounts for the 33%. Yeah, it just becomes yeah. obviously, um, a little bit difficult. It's obviously the, the, the new rules, uh, the points, um, is to also solve the problem of the um, shortage in the rental market, especially uh, for lower incomes and middle income earners uh, are not able to get into the rental market. And so that's what why these points are going up. Um, so we don't know just yet what's going to happen. It could be that it might be similar to what's in The Hague, that instead of a... Um, uh, uh, rental cap it's more who qualifies for these properties so if your property you know as I mentioned earlier if your property in The Hague is 185 points or less you need a housing permit and to qualify there's a salary cap for that oh sorry I think I might have because I spoke so quickly um, so in The Hague if your property is 185 points or less um, you need a house uh, a housing permit and to qualify you um need uh there's a salary cap so for example a single person is like sixty thousand, and for uh, taxable income that is and for two people it's seventy seven thousand. so maybe it's something that's going to be similar to that we don't know because obviously there's a lot of you know issues with that at the moment that's why they haven't announced it so yeah, one thing is it good to remember, uh, uh, um, every municipality is different, just so you know, uh, so be aware of that. It might be that one city has the points, that the city next to it doesn't work with the points. Uh, for example, Eindhoven, there is no points for uh, uh, only for corporations, so for anybody else, that doesn't apply. But just so you know, there are different, it's all, every city has a different law, so be aware of that, right? That's, yeah, a, that's it's very important to, to know. 
yeah, it's good to check <laughs> on the website as well on the up to date of the different regulation. As yes, well, indeed. Uh, which also applies in terms of uh, the sharing permit as well. Yes. Um, uh, Thank you. Appreciate it. No worries. So Q and A. Here we are. I see Robin. Are you already answered some of them? Is that? Uh... No, I haven't answered okay, any good. of them. So, oh, yeah. uh, that was. Me, uh questions from one could help another as well so uh, okay that's... perfect well, no, that's I, okay. Answered, I answered a lot of the rental questions obviously i didn't answer any of the <laughs> robin's questions so um you can read shall we go, shall I go through with them yeah yeah so do you want me to read the question so one is from beck is there a transfer tax to be paid when you're the seller ah very good question. I yes, like that. Yes, indeed, very um, good question. So, uh, no, so the the reason why <laughs> I, uh, I like it. So, when you see um, when you go on Funda, and uh, I'm not entirely sure how it's stated in the on the on the English version actually, but in the on the Dutch version, you see a number, uh, so the asking price, and then you see KK, and that's uh, is short for Kostekoper. Kostekoper. Which yeah, there you go. But the nice. costs are for the buyer. Yeah, the costs are for the buyer. So. Right now, um, we're in a seller's market in that sense that um, uh, there's a shortage in housing. So there's a larger uh, demand that there's a supply. So basically, a seller, uh, people want to buy a house and the seller can then select who they want to sell it to and also what those requirements are. One of these things are the costs for the buyer. So what costs are there? Um, there's the transfer tax and there's the cost for the, uh, for the, for the notary. Uh, for when it comes to the transfer deed, making sure that the, uh, the property ownership is transferred to the new person. So um, because we're in the seller's market right now, automatically um, the costs are for the, buyer, uh, for the buyer. So the buyer has to pay for the transfer tax and the notary costs. Um, why I mentioned this so specifically is a lot of years ago, maybe in the 80s, I think, um, sometimes it was one of the parts you could negotiate over. You say, okay, sure, I want to buy your house, but you have to pay for the transfer tax. Now that doesn't apply anymore. Even if you would do that, then the seller would just say, okay, sure. But then my price increases by the amount of the transfer tax. So basically it doesn't really work. So the transfer tax in short, always, and I go back to the transfer tax again, uh, transfer tax is always paid by the buyer of the property. Uh, the next question is, or oh, is, oh, sorry. Or oh, is it just 10% to be paid by the buyer? Sorry, that was there. Um, Beck again, does Amsterdam 533,000 euro WOZ value rental rule apply if you bought the house prior to this rule? I think so nope. that nope. Nope. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't apply then. And <clears throat> even uh, maybe an addition there, um, if you buy it from an investor, so it's, if it's already rented out, uh, then you can buy the house, no problem. Uh, but then, of course, there's somebody living in there, so you cannot just move in and snuggle up to the person that's ten the tenant there. So that's an issue. But um, <laughs> so, uh, that's uh, there are possibilities to when you want to invest in property within these rulings, and if it's already rented out, that is okay. Uh, and if you bought before the um, the ruling started, it doesn't apply in these. Yes, and I think Beck also have uh, a last question. Can you have two st uh, simultaneously mortgages? if you would like to rent out your previously bought home and buy another one? Yeah, uh, yes, you can. So uh, to give you a kind of a timeline here, so you're very happy with your current home that you have bought, let's say three years ago, and you think, okay, sure, this might be the moment to move to a new house. So regardless of what you're doing with your current house, you can always close a new mortgage and to a certain extent, your current property uh, in your current mortgage will not be considered uh, in the mortgage application. Uh, to a certain extent, what I mean by that is you, the only thing that you have to show is that you, if you haven't sold it yet or haven't refinanced it yet, you have to show that you can find, uh, you can afford 12 months of the mortgage payments of your current house. And then you can buy a new property and we can just focus on the new mortgage uh, primarily. Then the, the new bank will want to know, okay, sure, but what are you going to do? Something has to be done with your current house. It makes sense that you first want to buy a new house, move in there, and then sell your current house. Otherwise, you have a couple of months that you have to live in uh, in one of the parks. You don't want that. So there's uh, it makes sense that you have kind of an overlap, and that is okay. Um, Tax-wise, 
there's a maximum over, uh, overlap of two years. Um, and then within that time, because you have need, might need time to sell your property, uh, and then you can choose to first buy the new house and then sell or refinance your property to an investment mortgage. So that those are the steps. In the meantime, that you haven't sold or haven't refinanced your property, you can indeed only in this specific situation temporarily have two mortgages, two residential mortgages, both have tax benefits, and uh, that's all good. But that's the temporary uh, period that you can have that. Um, this, uh, by the way, I'm answering all the, uh, I'm asking you all the questions because I answered the other one. So I'm not sure what I should be, but is there an option and benefit? This is from Alex. Is there an option and benefit in terms of taxes in putting the BTL property into a limited company? That's quite specific. Um, yeah, so it, it is a, a, a question that we get asked more frequently. So basically, does, does it have a benefit if you want to uh, buy the house as a, a consumer, a private consumer, or as an uh, within a company? And there's not necessarily a tax benefit, only if you really want to. So when you set up a, a limited or a BV, uh, as it's called, uh, what the equivalent is here in the Netherlands, if you do that, um, uh, if you that's more common when you want to exceed your uh, portfolio over four or five properties, and you want to really dive into that, then it can start making sense to do it through uh, a BV. Um, otherwise, there's not necessarily a benefit there. Uh, this is from Gra Gabriella. This is for you again, Robin. When you have a buy to let or keep to let mortgage regarding taxes, mm -hmm. is wear and tear on your property during renting it out tax deductible in the Netherlands? For example, you had to do some renovations in your rental property, keep your receipts and use it to reduce your taxes. So uh yeah, I understand. The very good. Uh, I like uh, I like the, the 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 detail there and, and the yeah. consideration. So. Yeah. Um, no, uh, and that might be different. I have to be sure. I have to be honest. Uh, I'm not 100% sure how that would result into if you do buy it, uh, if you do expand your portfolio and you build and you set up a company basically to take care of all of this, then it could be considered company expenses. Um, uh, and then it might have a benefit when it comes to the income tax that you then would have to pay less because that's something that applies when you have a company, of course. That's why it starts making sense to um, do that when you have over, let's say, four or five um, uh, uh, properties in your portfolio, because then you'll be considered as a professional uh, investor. Uh, but other than that, um, there's no tax benefit because you don't pay taxes. You don't pay income tax over the rental income that you have uh, if you're in a, a smaller um, a portfolio. So then there wouldn't be a tax benefit uh, as well. Uh, sorry, another one for you, um, which is quite specific. For keep to let, this is from an anonymous attendee. For the keep to let, does the lender care about the monthly rent amount as well if their house is not rented out yet? How bank estimate the monthly rent in amount? Yeah, so the uh, expected rental income is based on the valuation report that would be set up. Uh, so when you buy a house um, or when you finance a property in a mortgage, regardless of what your situation is, you always need a valuation report that is set up by an appraiser. Um, so in this valuation report, it will determine what the value of the property is um, when you sell it in open market, let's say, so the regular market, but also what the value is in rented state, which is usually lower, and also what the expected rental income is. Um, so uh, that's what the mortgage partially will be based on, and uh, the fact that you cannot finance the full 100% and the interest rates are higher, that is the risk assessment of uh, banks, uh, including already, so there might be a duration that you wouldn't have rental income. This is also why you need some savings available uh, when buying a property um, uh, for investment purposes, uh, so the bank wants to know, okay, can you cover a couple of months of vacancy in the in the property so that the property is not rented out, that is included there as well. If you already know that the property uh, will not be um, uh, uh, livable, let's say, because you're renovating or you buy a new build as an investment purpose, for an investment purpose, then you have to show that for the time that you know that the property cannot be rented out, you have that in savings to cover those uh, costs. Yeah. Um, Dio, I think you answered this in the presentation, so I'm going to get you to answer it. What yeah. is the best rental contract model if you need to rent out your only house because you have been appointed to a new job abroad? 
Yeah, that would be Model C. Uh, if you're going abroad for uh, 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 whatever reason is and you stay there for a while, uh, then you can definitely use the Model C, especially when you know when you're coming back. So that you can put a minimal, uh, you can put also your return uh, 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 date there that you're going to need the house within six months. Uh, that's a maximum period, for example. Um, and then, uh, uh, and they're also going to have one month notice if they want to leave, of course. But then, you know, that they, they already know that you're going to be coming back to the country and then you will need the property. So that will be a Model C. But yeah, every uh, uh, situation is different, just so you know. Uh, uh, and you could, let's say you uh, uh, got this new job uh, uh, abroad and then you have one year contract, you could extend Model C uh, for three times. Uh, but for example, if you have an indefinite contract already with that company, that's something you need to, we need to discuss a little bit further to see what the best option will be. But yeah, it, Model C uh, for now would be the most uh, uh, indicated for you. Um, so there's two <coughs> questions regarding how to um, count the point calculation. One is to how to ensure the point calculation of your house is accurate. Are there companies who does the scoring? And then the other one is how do you find out how many points uh, your property has? Um, we can share with this presentation um, the link um, to you, with you. Um, there are companies that you can use. Um, you can calculate it yourself. Um, uh, with the link that we will share. But if it is very close, it's good to obviously then get someone uh, to do it. But if it's quite like a, a big gap, I don't think it's necessarily, you know, it, it's something that you can easily do yourself. If you've got all the information in terms of, you know, uh, the measurements of your property, the layout um, and all of that, and the WOZ value on hand, um, you could certainly answer that question yourself, but yeah, it uh, we recommend to use a company to do the calculation if it's you know close to the um, like if it's 148 points instead of 149, let's say. Um, I think that is it, and then the other one was you answered, Dio, which is I'm planning to let my mortgage ap apartment probably in 2025. Can I have a consultation with you now so I know how to prepare? Yes. 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 <laughs> That's what I answered. I <laughs> answered for you. Can I say, yes, of course. Good, you can always talk to them. So, <laughs> yes, yeah, no, no, but it's it's actually uh, true. Uh, what Ivana mentioned, uh, you can always schedule yes, a call. Yes, indeed. Um, yeah. uh, by all means do, even if you just want to have questions you want to have answered and you don't yes. know if you want to proceed with our service. Uh, I think I speak for all of us, really. Um, uh, and I think we're, we're, while we just before we started this uh, this webinar, we had a short chat with the three of us, and uh, lucky few were <laughs> were able to follow that as well. But it's basically there's a lot of uh, information going around uh, online, yeah. and not yeah. everything is correct. There is a fair amount of clickbait, as that's just the day and age that we're in right now. Um, so if you have any questions, if you're not entirely sure if it applies to you or what it really means and uh, especially when it can be a bit daunting when you read some of these things online as well and you're not entirely sure how it works just schedule a call if you just want to get your facts straight and want to have uh, fake information uh, well i don't like that term um yes when it comes to information <laughs> as a whole yeah if yeah. it applies to you let's see uh, if it needs debunking or just detailed or specified on your situation and uh, you can always schedule a call whether you want to potentially by now or in seven years that's all good yes indeed yeah that's a, uh, that's uh, that's exactly why uh, uh, that's why i say yes i knew you would say yes so uh... <laughs> <laughs> Great <minds. That's> there <laughs> you go <laughs> yeah but it is true though if you have questions if uh, every situation is different uh, uh, every situation has their specifics so that's why it's nice to uh, book the intake uh, it is for free we can answer your questions uh, regarding all your property and how to rent it out and all the regulations and then uh, and then uh, 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 Mr. Mortgage Robin will answer all the questions regarding your finance and then and then you feel more comfortable if it's not now if it's going to be for the future at least you know what is going to happen and what to expect it and how to give the next steps in a safe way I would definitely do that yeah me and you want to we don't answer uh, the tax questions, so that's no, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> we, we answer the uh, rules and regulations, and Robin does the finance. Yeah, so, and yes. I, I did want to be clear. Same way. Okay. Uh, uh, anything <laughs> financial, that's good when it comes to specific rules and regulations, and uh, and uh, when it comes to contracts and uh, and so on. 
these are the ones to to go with uh, so yeah that's uh, uh but i think that's uh, we made that clear in this, uh, in this yeah, yes i think yeah. so too i think so too. i think a lot of the questions we get during the uh consultation is with people with their current properties so obviously they get worried about what's going to happen with it with, with the tax new rules so that goes to robin and then the other one is obviously the point system is one of the um worries that people have so yeah definitely uh, we're here to answer some of those questions yeah indeed i guess mm -hmm. that's it uh wait i saw one last question coming up nicholas he said he just joined the meeting is that okay <laughs> uh yeah i'm yeah so sorry that let's do it again yeah, so it's like, oh, it everything, everything. <laughs> no, we could we could do a podcast style this time. Yes, <laughs> indeed. But Robby, it is for you if it's that sure. okay for you to answer one yeah, last yeah, question. Sure. No, no, no. Uh, I bought an apartment in 2017 and I still have to pay back to 220K uh, now and I would like to buy a second property. Can I use the revenue of my first apartment that is going to be a rental apartment to increase my mortgage capacity for the second house? One more time. So you, you, uh, there is a property bought in uh, 2017. He bought an apartment in 2017, and he still yeah. have to pay back to the bank about yeah. 220k. And yeah. now he would like to buy a second property. Can yeah. he use the revenue of the first apartment that is going to be a rental apartment? So he's going to um, the Refinance. revenue. So the rental, the rent, the monthly rental yeah. to yeah. increase my mortgage capacity yeah. for the second property. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I understand, and I, I popped up the question here as well. Um, so oh, I kind of uh, better understand what the, what the situation is. Because, well, basically, um, when you own a property, there's not revenue yet because you haven't sold it yet. So that was kind of where the confusion is. But um, so uh, just to get things straight, you have revenue, that is where you actually sold the property, and you have equity, that is when there's value in your property and you haven't sold it yet. So just to kind of get the, the determination right. But I fully understand the question, and it's very clear, actually. Very first of all, well done buying a house in 2017. And yes. Now because well, <laughs> I was you thinking the same did, thing. Did very well. Uh, <laughs> and when there's 220 left to repay, I expect that there's a fair amount of equity in the property as well, yes. meaning value, uh, the difference between the value of the property and outstanding mortgage. So can you use that? Uh, you might be. Uh, it kind of depends on what the value in rented state comes back as from the valuation report. So when you want to refinance your current property to rent it out, because you have to, Residential mortgage lenders will not allow you to rent out your house regularly. So when you rent out your current property, you have to get an investment mortgage. And then basically uh, you have a 220 mortgage left on the property. Anything that the value of the property is in rented state is more. And you can finance with an investment mortgage. That's what you can take out as equity to use to purchase the, first, the second property. Clear explanation, uh, example. You have a 220 mortgage left on your current home that you want to have as an investment uh, property. Let's say you can finance 300,000 euros investment mortgage on that property. You have 220 left on your mortgage, so that goes to that. And then you have 80,000 euros in equity left that you can use um, for the financing of your new property. If anything, this is a quite specific situation. It all depends on the property value and your income and uh, the expected rental income from your current property as well. So to be more specific about this, we have to do the calculations. But yes, you can, uh, depending on a couple of variables. I think there's one last one, but we kind of answered that in terms of what do you think the new point system will do to the market, especially with the 30 to 15 meter square apartments in Amsterdam. Again, it's all, you know, uh, it's a proposal. We don't know exactly what it entails yet uh, and what's gonna happen. Uh, there's a lot of discussion about it. So it's really hard to advise. I mean, as Diavana said, just be aware that it will go up, but in terms of what that entails, we don't know that specifically. So um, the reason probably that it hasn't been announced is because it will change the market a lot yes. um, a lot of these properties and, and a lot of people are worried obviously a lot of in, especially people with um investment properties um you know whether it's going to cover the rent will cover their mortgage there's so many you know um yeah there's so much uh, you know if if that if it means that there is a rental cap then i think people will start a lot of people will sell their properties because obviously they it's not going to cover their mortgage. 
but I mean, I always, yeah, always advise people that it's, you know, not necessarily thinking about having the passive income in terms of their properties, but having a portfolio, you mm. know, looking at it from a different perspective that, you know, now that when you're keeping an investment property, it's, it's, it's something to building up your portfolio and yeah. I don't know. What do you think, Robin, in terms of looking at it financially? It, it, oh, financially, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Sorry. I mean, it, it always depends on the, the greater yeah. scheme of things as well. And, and it's always, and that's where we come into in any case. So it's always good to, um, what makes sense for one person can make a whole different uh, side of things, a uh, different sense to another person. So it's it's uh, hard to have a an overall general formula that always works. Uh, so just always be sure that what your situation is, have it checked because then we, we know what actually makes sense to your personal situation for now in the long term as well. So um, yeah, that's that's where we are in any case really. And I guess it also depends on the property, right? Uh, 30 to 50 square meters can be a very, uh, uh, um, it can be, if you have a 50 square meters, very luxury property, depends on the location and depends how the energy label is. It might be that you don't even fall on the point systems. It might be that you do if the property is not in a uh, good condition as it's supposed to be, or that is many factors to, to be in the point system or not be in the point system. So it is hard for us to tell you what is going to happen based on that because we don't know the property but yeah if it does if the, if the law passes and everything changes it will impact the market for sure uh, um, quite a lot so that's think, why yeah it's good that, to consider when you are going into the buy to let if you're buying as an investment that that take that into consideration when yes indeed property. yeah yeah um, I saw another question on the chat and I think nobody talked about this one and I'd like to ask you that one, Robbie, because it's a very, I, I get that question a lot with my buying clients as well. Uh, I'm an expat living in, in the Netherlands and I'm considering buying a house in Amsterdam. In the future, I might move back to my home country, but my want to keep my property to rent it out. What are the remaining considerations I need to think about as it relates to mortgage fees and how I would be taxed for rental income related to the property after I move away, non-resident? Yeah, I understand. Again, yes. uh, when you rent out, uh, thanks for the question, first off. Um, and first off, um, when you own property and you rent it out completely, so you don't live in it yourself anymore, you rent it out, there's no income tax over the rental income, regardless of who, what, where, why, um, you don't pay uh, income tax uh, again at this time. Uh, I cannot yeah. say what happens in five years, of course. Yes. Uh, I've lost that first of all a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> uh, same goes for interest rates, by the way. Um, so when it comes for uh, the rest, so right now, um, there are some banks that are okay with you moving abroad and keeping the property here and then finance it in an investment mortgage. Um, currently, um, uh, the banks are most comfortable with when you move within the EU. Um, so that's, but that can differ as well as time goes by, right? So then if you buy a house now um, in Amsterdam area and you want to move, out, uh, move back to your home country or anywhere else outside of the Netherlands, there uh, can be possibilities. And if anything, I expect these possibilities to expand as time goes by. Uh, when we look at what the conditions were a year and a half ago, they were significantly more strict than they are right now because very gradually for investment mortgages but also residential mortgages banks do start to understand that the market is internationalizing more and more so i expect that the possibilities uh, long term will be uh, will increase as well so also maybe outside of the eu will be more accessible um, to keep your property and rent it out if anything what situation is you buy a house now to live in your uh, live in right now and focus on that as well then uh, if we look at what the last three years happens, that shows that you cannot really predict what the future will hold. Um, why I'm saying that is when you uh, buy a house to live in right now, focus on what you feel comfortable with now in terms of monthly payments, where you live and just comfort. Um, and then when you decide to move away, then uh, we can redetermine what your perfect situation is. It might be that the housing market is in such a way that makes more sense for you to sell the house and benefit from the profit that you make. Or we can say, okay, sure, what are the possibilities to rent out that property uh, at that time? Um, so it depends on when, when you're planning to do what. Uh, there are definitely possibilities, and I expect them to um, uh, expand more and more over time. Yes. 
And the final question, uh, if I, I rent another you. prop, uh, yeah. sorry? <laughs> no, I don't believe that's the final question. That's oh, no, it. you know, okay, I will try, I will <laughs> no, no, try, no, no, I will good, try. It's good, it's good, go ahead. <laughs> but we are coming to the time the, anyway. The yeah, final, yeah. final, final question. There you go, there you go. Go ahead. <laughs> we're we're going to try. If I rented out a property, can I take advantage of tax deductions for mortgage interest, uh, interest and expenses like I can for a primary home? Uh, quick and painful, no. Yes. Yeah. So there's, uh, the tax benefits and uh, tax deductions uh, only apply for uh, financing property that you're going to live in yes. yourself. So your yeah. primary residence, only then you have a tax benefit. Yes, it did hurt though. <laughs> Let's focus on the bright side. When you do buy a house for your personal residency, you do have a tax benefit. Let's, uh, there you go. There uh, you go. I won't say the, the word tax benefit, uh, tax uh, transfer tax anymore. You can, you can, you can. No, I, 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 you can, you can say it. That's fine. Thank you. Uh, I think that was actually the final question. Uh, so I would like to thank everyone for being here, of course, taking the time. Again, if, oh, sorry, someone popped up a question. They just said, no, they said thank you. Oh, <laughs> appreciate that. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> but yeah, thank you everyone for being here. You see the QR codes. Please feel free to book an intake with us. If you have any questions, we are here to answer them. Um, thank you, Robin, for he being here. Uh, we really appreciate this. I think it helps a lot of people when you are uh, in the webinars as well. Um, Lilette, thank you for so much for the support. And uh, yeah, into the next one. For sure. Thanks for hosting, uh, as always, and uh, enjoy your uh, sunny days. Yes. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Everyone. Bye.